let's light the forge. But first, with safety always in mind, I'm going to tell you that forging or having a forge on heat treating, making knives, doing any blacksmithing is dangerous. Okay, the risk factor is really high if you have, you know, household mixed with shop stuff all around. If you have a shop shop, you know, give yourself good space away from things. Have a nice steel structure that you can set your forge on. Don't set it on wood. Think logically, okay? But I'm not going to, I'm just going to say this. It's dangerous. I don't recommend it to a beginner doing it. You guys are going to do what you're going to do. I'm just going to tell you this. It's dangerous. That's, that's all. Now, let's, let's light the forge. Make sure I have a three burner majestic forge. So all my, my burners are off. I'm going to test my flame first. Okay. My gates are open in the front where I'm lighting in the back of closed. Turn this guy on. Crack this. So you hear it. Fire in the hole. I just cracked this barely. Put your gates up. With a little bit of an opening. And that will heat up right quick and in a hurry, especially if you turn on another burner. And then lastly, Airflow. I have my back door cracked. I have my front door garage cracked. You don't want to die of carbon monoxide poisoning. When it comes to forging or heat treating everything, when you have too much light in a smaller area, it's really hard to read your colors. So watch the difference here. This got significantly darker in here. And you want that. The other thing I want to talk about is tongs. Okay, I'm holding these bare fisted without gloves on because these haven't touched the forge yet. As soon as these touch the forge or any metal at all, I do not touch any tongs without gloves on. It's not fun to get burnt by these, even a little bit. All right, let's normalize some steel, shall we? We'll have a little bit about operations uh, for what you're gonna see here and what I would really recommend. Uh, if you do get into this in a safe environment, some things that are gonna increase your likelihood of having a successful heat treat. Temple stick is something I've just started to start using versus just my eyeballs for the color of steel. For this particular one, and there's all kinds of ranges, this melts at 1600 degrees. Shout out to Knife Nerds who uh, said this in his ADCRB2 video. This thing is awesome. Uh, so this crayon will melt at 1600 degrees and that's about where you want to do your first uh, normalization heat. And then from there, it's not as hot. You're going to be around to where salt's going to melt, which you're going to be seeing these things. So orders to operation, Temple stick rated to somewhere around the steel that you're using. Salt. We have a sheet heat shield that we're going to be putting in there uh, for our two other normalizations. And also, I'm going to show you other uh, things that are going on right now that you're going to not really see in the video, but I want to point out. So, this is an Inkbird app that is keeping track of my oil heat as it is heating up. Okay, so I'm going to set that back there. And it has an alarm. That goes off at minimum 118, maximum 122. That's too cold and too hot. Painting troughs that are stainless steel, a food warming plate that's rated up to 220 or 210 degrees. This is set for 200 until we get close to temperature. And again, the ink bird with the probes not resting on the tip of the bottom because that'll give you a false reading, but floating in the oil. And then again, there's the, gonna stick this guy in the forge. Gloves on. Tongs. Net hook for our pit. Our normalization station. Say that five times fast. Hook. Okay. And at the top here, for safety, it says if it's hanging, it's hot. Okay. All right. directly into the fire. I have two burners going right now because I'm working on uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do fixed blade tomahawks but I'm not going to show you my work right now. It's it, it's getting better but I'm not there yet. But that's why we practice, right? Okay. So we're going to watch this. I'm going to tune you guys back on as soon as it's that color and from a distance you're going to see me do this with gloves on both hands 
testing it to see if we're at that temperature and then just hold it a little bit longer. In fact, what I usually do, if I think it's close to that temperature, I'll tell my phone to set a timer for 30 or 45 seconds or whatever it is. It just determines, it, what, what matters is, is how thick your steel is. This isn't that thick, so maybe 30 seconds. It's even it, more it, challenging to do, but here we go while recording. Okay, so is my glove on? Alexa, set timer for 30 seconds. 30 seconds, starting now. Be very careful when you're grabbing so you don't bend it. Grab it out. Okay, we melt it. Let's stick it back in there just for a little bit longer to get that color again, then we're gonna hang it. It's also interesting that Cran as soon as that fire hits it, it just kind of like makes a little fire dance around where the crayon melted. Uh, that made sense. All right, that's all right. Here we go. Good grip on it. And there we go. We let that get down to about 100. Or so, maybe a little bit more, and uh, we go for the heat shoot. For our first normalization, let's see where we're at here. We're 150, it's ready to go back in. I'm going to start uh, warming the heat shield. The oil's slowly getting to where I, I want it to be before we, we uh, we're ready for our final normalization. So, I'll show you what that looks like here. magnetic temperatures so versus just testing it with the magnet when we go to quench which we're not doing right now we're just getting a normalization uh, uh, temperature which is right about that bright that, that cherry red to a little bit brighter we're gonna go for that a little bit brighter for the first one the second one we're gonna go right as soon as that salt melts back to down to 150 around about there and then go for the quench so here, here we go I'm gonna show you guys here So my, my uh, cooking plate is 160 degrees, and this is what I want to see is 119 to 119. And it's been about 119 to 120 for about 20 minutes now. That means I plateaued. So I want to show you something. Okay, so this is my reading of the, the temperature ranges, because this is for cooking meat, right? Um, this is where we started, and this is where it is. Now, what you want to see if you use this method is straight lines regardless if it goes down or up just a straight line that is safe to quench when it's around the temperature you want 119 to 120 um, so I just want to show you that if you have ups and downs like 
that that is what's called artificial. That's when your phone's going to be going off with alarms constantly and it's super annoying. That's why, if you notice up here, I, um, I lowered the temperature from 118 to 117 because I kept on just going off. I was jumping between 118 and 117. So this is where we're at. We're plateauing hopefully at 119, which is safe and it's not artificial because it's a straight line. Okay, y'all, so I'm gonna go ahead and place the light on fire. Once you've seen the salt boat once, you get the general idea, so I'm not gonna show that part. What you are gonna see me do is pull it, um, I'll, I'll, I'll record it after, I'll try to capture the color after I pull it in the paint. Uh, color right there. in the straightening jig here. I don't know if you guys can see in there or not. It's pretty closed off, but. All right, we'll see if she she has a soul in a second. All right, y'all, so it's cool to the touch. We do have a slight warp in the tip, and I can tell you why. Um, we are pretty thin right here, and we're really thick right here, so that's gonna cause that to bow off to the side. However, it's only about that much so we'll chop that guy off once it's done tempering but let's see if it even has a sole i haven't done any file markings on this so you can see okay that's hard let's test it down here pretty hard Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and test it with a Rockwell file. I always do this just for fun. I want to see if it's above 65 Rockwell, which I don't like to put knives like this above that high, so it should scale off. We're going to go to this opposite side, though. There's not any forward scale. So it barely skates off. That's okay. So I'm guessing we're going to have this guy, for its purpose and everything, we're going to shoot for it being between 60 and 65 with my Rockwell testing files. But if I were to put a number on it, between 60 and 62 tops. But yeah, so there we go, guys. We're going to go throw this in the oven. Um, this is going to be thrown in there for two hours at 400 degrees, and then it'll cool down, and then we'll bring it to. Um, 405 for an additional two hours and we should have around what we're looking for.